And there we are. It is a little past uh, one o'clock in the morning. And because of an eight o'clock kickoff, we are late starting this Tiger Bait post game show brought to you by attorney Kenneth P. Haynes in Shreveport. But uh, LSU takes care of business in a nasty weather Tiger Stadium, a sparse crowd. I don't think there was anything more, any more than 45,000. And uh, many of the uh, those who were in attendance, uh, if they were in the um, uh, the uh, stadium club, they were in, in the uh, heat, and most of them are watching it on TVs while they were in the stadium eating gumbo. So, uh, but LSU takes care of business, forty-one to ten. Brian Kelly opens up his press conference, really talking about the toughnesses of, of his team and coming out in this football game in, in bad weather, um, thirty-four, forty degrees, whatever you want to call it, forty to forty-five degrees. Uh, rainy and um, uh, certainly he uh, applauded the way his team came out and played, comparing them to other teams across the country uh, that struggled today. And uh, we wondered uh, if LSU is going to come out like uh, TCU and and um, Michigan, and and then we saw what happened to Tennessee late, uh, later in the night. Um, but they did, and they took care of business. And um, what more can you say about Jaden Daniels? Three hundred yards, uh, right? Three hundred yards passing over 100 yards rushing. Noah came with multiple touchdowns. And so we got a lot to talk about. And uh, so let's bring in Preston Guy. Preston, what did you think about uh, the game tonight? Yeah, I mean, LSU did what it was supposed to do. This wasn't a game where you can really go out there and earn any brownie points. I mean, whether you win, you know, 59 nothing or 41 to 10, it's all the same in the eyes of national perception. And you did what you needed to do. I mean, it's one of those games where if you go out and you look sluggish and people see, you know, score shots of, you know, ESPN does the score checkup and you're down, you know, in the third quarter, you're down 28, 25 or whatever, that could hurt you for perception. So you avoided that. Uh, overall, the biggest news for LSU actually didn't even occur on the field for LSU tonight. Tennessee lost. That all but guarantees LSU a playoff spot if the Tigers take care of business against Georgia. And I watched that game with Georgia today. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, if LSU plays a good football game and you catch Georgia on an off day, LSU's got a real chance against Georgia. Well, I tell you what, there are some people out there who are suggesting that maybe USC might jump LSU this week. I don't see it so, happening. I mean, this is their first ranked win, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, look, this playoff—they might jump them in the AP poll, but the playoff committee has a proven track record of rewarding you for your wins more than punishing you for your losses. By yeah, the way, that yeah. Florida State loss looks better every week. They're going to keep on moving up the polls. They, 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 they had a really big win over ULL today. Uh, Tasha Tiger gives us a go. Tigers, glad to see Tasha in here. Of course, I know she's out. Uh, unless she's in town, and I don't know about it, but she's out west, and so we're actually at a good time for her. Yeah. Uh, it uh, one fifteen in the morning. It's um, I guess eleven uh, thirteen or, or ten fifteen uh, West Coast California time. Glad to have you with us, Tasha. Uh, of course, she runs the great uh, Real LSU Nation uh, Facebook group, and uh, love reading that board. And she helps manage that and does a fantastic job. Uh, Chance Babbin, Mike, how about the 2024 commitment we got today? Yeah, Wallace Foster, a kid that uh, had a little bit of bad luck uh, in August and uh, had to have a, a knee surgery, but um, was fantastic at camp. Uh, had a fantastic uh, 2021 season, and the LSU coaches really love him, and they have not wavered on recruiting him, and LSU beat out a bunch of schools. So you're talking about a five foot eleven, about 170 to 180 pound. Uh, cornerback, anxious to see how big uh, he'll end up getting or how much weight he can carry. Uh, but he's ve uh, very much uh, a big time athlete. And um, but we are you know looking at huddle film, um, and I, I believe I had some footage of him that I shot at camp in June. Uh, but uh, we're going to expand on that story tomorrow. Of course, the news of his commitment broke during the football game. So what's up on the site right now is his bare bones. But we're going to expand on that tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he's a good one. And now LSU has what eight commitments uh, for the class of twenty four, and it's considered uh, it's a consensus top five recruiting class. 
Hey, look, that's the uh, kind of kid why Brian Kelly is here, man, because those kids are just littered throughout the state. All these high-speed DBs, receivers. Get them in, man. Reel them in. 2024 is looking really sharp. Uh, James Sell says, morning, men. Glad to have you with us, James. Vons <laughs> Bluesman. Y'all really up at 115. Yeah, we're getting it in. Um, you guys, if you're enjoying the show, as y'all always do for us, please hit the like button. Share it to your Facebook, your Twitter, uh, other groups. Tweet it, uh, text it to your friends. Of course, it's it's one in the morning. Send it to them tomorrow. A lot yeah. of people will end up. <laughs> a lot of people end up watching us yeah. uh, tomorrow. Uh, we watch our views go uh, all day on Sunday. Um, and he uh, Chance says we need to pull for Notre Dame next week. That's going to be a big game. Uh, that one is in Los Angeles, uh, not in South Bend. Um, Big Cohonas, Kelly, USC is going to skip over LSU money talks. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see what how, what kind of argument. And um, you guys I may have seen it before. See it. I don't know what Herb Street or any of the talking heads had to say late tonight, uh, but those guys are, are famous for putting their thumbs on the scale. Um, and, it, and that stuff has worked in LSU's favor uh, multiple times over the years. How Jubin had Big Cohonas, Kelly, this week, they will, and it means zero. Yeah, even if they do jump LSU yeah, this week, mean anything. what if L- if LSU takes care of A and M and and does something that nobody thinks they're going to do in Atlanta? Uh, you know, I just have a hard time believing that if LSU were to, uh, you know, what, what's going to be the line on that game? Fourteen to sixteen in Atlanta. Mm, I'll say Georgia minus thirteen and a half. Um, you know, maybe that's maybe that's high, but maybe that's probably I, I was told fifteen or sixteen a week ago. Um, but if Here's LSU deal. were to do something, you beat Georgia, I, you're in, right? I mean, there's all this talk; it really doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So what? USC passes you up. I don't think they will, but who cares? Because Ohio State and Michigan play each other, and then you'll have beaten Georgia on your way to a national uh, SEC championship. You're in. Just beat Georgia. There's no way that an SEC champion is not going to be in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is something that I honestly believe that Sankey uh, would be working the refs like nobody's business because he does not want that to be a a precedent or that that happens where an SEC champion is not in the playoffs. Um, uh, Hal Juden, big big honus, Kelly, I, I, I get a good laugh out of the fan base. And their, their meltdown when USC does jump us on Tuesday night. Um, Big Cajonas Kelly, how ironic it would be to have Notre Dame beat, beat, beat USC and BK and LSU gets in. Yeah. Uh, Chance Babbin, Derek Davis at running back threw me off, but he was a stud in high school, right? Oh, yeah. He ran for um, like 1,200 yards as a senior. Yeah. Uh, I like some of his runs that I saw um, mm-hmm. late in the game. By the way, can we talk um, about that running back position real quick? That It is an absolute mess right now, depth-wise, okay? We all love Armani Josh Goodwin Williams. Out. He's out for the season. Well, yeah, but Josh Williams is back. I, there was an erroneous yeah. report. It, it's it's Armani that's out, and Josh will be back next week. Goodwin's out for the season, Brian Kelly confirmed in the postgame. Josh Williams could have played tonight. But they probably decided you're playing UAB and you were really leaning heavy on him at this point. Let's just give it to Emery and Goodwin and Emery, man. I can't imagine he won't be in the doghouse after tonight. Me and you were joking around about that before the game. Not even joking around. We were just like, if someone gave you a bet and said, yes or no, he fumbles, do you take that bet that he fumbles or doesn't? We, we both said no. He's going to fumble on a rainy, wet, cold night. He's got yeah, fumbling Yeah, because he fumbles issues. when it's dry. Right. That's what I'm saying. He's got a real bad fumbling problem. So, I mean, look, I, I, hate it. I hate it for him. And, of course, Sanji always tells a story about how the first time I went and filmed him, it was him against John Eric. Yep. And I came back and said he put the ball on the ground four times. Yep. And someone suggested, no, it was five that game. But I counted four. And yep. so that's just been a running thing with John Emery the whole time. We Everybody's wanted him to snap out of it. Everybody's been pulling for him. Um, but, man, enough's enough. You, you just cannot have running backs that put the ball on the ground. Well, here's the deal. Go. He's in the doghouse. I don't care how house. talented he is. He's in the doghouse, but can you really afford not to go back to him? you got two other backs. you got Josh Williams and Noah Kane. You're not you're not going to not use three backs, and I don't think they're turning to Derek Davis or or we saw Nick Demos tonight. Dem, Demos, <laughs> um, 
he, he got some quality carries there. So I, I think that that's, that's your plan at running back is lean on those three <laughs> and keep on rolling with Jaden Daniels, who, by the way, had 400 yards tonight. Vaughn Bluesman, Coach Kelly is making men out of boys. It is phenomenal the mindset change he's helping still in these young men. They believe in, it, in themselves and each other. Um, check the Brian Kelly post game video we've got right here on Tiger Bait. It's on our YouTube channel, and or it's linked on our front page of Tiger Bait. You can get it there as well in a hurry. Um, I love the way he opened up his press conference tonight. That was uh, what did he say? Let me hold on a second. Let me collect my thoughts so I can articulate this the right way. And uh, yep. that's really, a, really a breath of fresh air. Just, just the way he communicates with the public, and and the way he uses his press conference to to talk about his team. Um, uh, go, go check that out if you haven't seen it already. Um, but yeah, that's that's what Von Bluesman is referring to. Um, Nicholas Lacombe, uh, strength of schedule. It's why your favorite team wants to come to the SEC. Uh, Clay Rivers beat Texas A&M first. Absolutely. Got to take care uh, of Chance business. Babin. John Emery is high risk, high reward. And look, man, he's had some beautiful runs. He's, mm-hmm. he's, um, but yeah, there you go. I'm just not sure that the rewards are worth that risk. The rewards are, are okay. I see Billy Jean over my uh, left shoulder getting some camera time. Uh, <laughs> Big Cajonas Kelly, yeah, UJ is very beatable like today. You stop the run, and Bennett can't throw accurate enough to move the ball. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's mostly where I'm at. I mean, LSU's defense should be able to hold its own. Can you score 24 points, though, against that defense? Because that defense is legit, y'all. Um, Von Bluesman, Mike, I spot your cat in the background lurking like <laughs> Mike the Tiger. Yeah, that's not my cat. Um I'm a dog guy, but those cats seem to love me. Uh, Big Kahona Kelly, mental health is key to success. Absolutely. And uh, there's a lot of that that they really focus on and all of LSU athletics now. Uh, Mental health is something that they've really ramped up, uh, things that they do inside the football program and in all sports at LSU. So, um, of course, guys, uh, we're here each and every week. uh, Thanks to uh, attorney Kenneth P. Haynes. And uh, I want to thank him for uh, sponsoring our post-game show each and every week. And uh, let's go ahead and hear from Kenny. Board-certified family law specialist Kenneth P. Haynes is a highly skilled and experienced trial and appeal attorney with over 33 years of experience solving real legal problems for real people, specializing in all aspects of family law, divorce, support, custody, and property. Your standards are high, so are ours. For representation in Northwest Louisiana, call attorney Kenny Haynes at 318-222-2100. And uh, Kenny is the unofficial official lawyer of TigerBait.com, and he reserves the right to think most clearly for a paying client. And, uh, uh, of course, he's Tiger Shark on our Tiger Den Premium Message Board and has been one of our premier uh, posters on the message board. And, of course, he's uh, one of the premier attorneys in the state of Louisiana. So if you need any legal uh, services in northwest Louisiana, uh, you want to uh, talk to Kenny. Um Let's see. We'll get some more comments in here. Guys, hit that like button if you're enjoying the show. And if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Um, we've got a lot on, on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're load, we load interviews up. I've got a couple more player inter- interviews already uh, uh, that I'm going to load up uh, in the morning. But Jaden Daniels is already up. Brian Kelly's already up. And, of course, uh, we're doing this show now. But um, – we're loading Mulkey stuff, McMahon, Jay Johnson. They've got a scrimmage tomorrow. And uh, so a lot of stuff on our Tiger Bait YouTube channel. You want to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Um, Von Bluesman, seriously, I would like to see about getting some pine tar for, or stick them on Emory <laughs> gloves. No pun yeah. intended. Look, yeah, no this doubt, has been man. going on for years. This has been going on for years with him. I don't know what the solution is. I, I, I really don't. Uh Chance Babb and Jaden was very decisive tonight. Hope last week was just a bad game. Um, Chance, I know uh, I talked to someone earlier in the week and saying, "Was that what do you draw from that Arkansas game? Uh, did 
Arkansas and 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 uh, Odom uh, come up with a, a the formula for locking him down, and our other schools going to follow suit. And I just that game was what it was. But LSU's played two weeks in a row of nasty weather, and they've gotten two wins. Yeah. So let's yeah, see no what's going to happen in college. Let's what what's going to happen in College Station. LSU had oh. 565 yards of offense tonight. I mean, offense, they showed up. Defense looked sluggish for a quarter. They picked it up eventually. By the way, they limited the nation's leading rusher, uh, McBride, for, for UAB. They limited him to 34 yards. So an impressive outing shutting them down, uh, especially after that, you know, that first quarter. Absolutely nasty weather by Louisiana yeah. Sanders. I mean, we, we, we get a lot of nasty weathers in various different ways. Uh, but one thing that uh, is always tough, particularly on Southern people, is um, cold in, in, in our climate and uh, rain like that, that. Nobody wants to be outdoors oh, in that. Man. And yet LSU gets almost 600 yards of total offense. Man, 40 degrees and rainy at 8 o'clock at night. Hey, look, I was surprised about 40,000 people showed up, if we're just being honest. That was nasty weather the, the only game i can think of that might have been worse that i've been to was 2008 troy that was terrible <laughs> and lsu went down like i think it was 35 3 or something crazy like that and ended up coming back i don't know i don't know anybody that didn't uh, I, seriously i don't know anybody that really didn't force themselves to go to the game tonight yeah i didn't want to go like they did like just want to stay home watch it on tv stay warm mm-hmm. uh eat a bunch of carbs, and go to sleep as early as you could after. Hey, look, if you showed up to that game, you are a hardcore fan. Pat yourself on the back. You deserve some sort of treat for that because that game was bad. Yeah. Um, A&M, Jimbo got his first win since, <laughs> since September 24th. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So you went the whole month just, of October without a win. And halfway that is crazy, man. It, and, and look, I think that's September 24th. That must have been Arkansas. You didn't even deserve that one. And look what Arkansas did today. Holy smokes. What's going on with, in Ole Miss? Man. You want to talk about a, lo- a losing streak. Right behind him is Lane Kiffin now. Yeah. That's with true. the egg ball coming up. With the, is Mississippi State going to get him too? Because now they've lost what. three. They've lost three what. straight or four straight now. You might you might badmouth your head coach into the Auburn gig if you're not careful, Ole Miss fans. Uh, American Patriot with a super chat. Thank you, uh, Patriot. After every score, number 86 is the first to congratulate. I didn't notice that. But it, it sounds about right. He's that kind of kid. Mm-hmm. Um, Mason Taylor. Yeah, there it is. May, uh, Lane, and, and he'll get four, he could get four in a row. Yeah, I mean, that's unbelievable. So he, he's heading down that Jimbo Fisher path now. American Patriot, another super chat. That crowd was dedicated, loved it. Um, Just like they these were. fans in this post game show, packing it up at 1.30 in the morning to talk some Tigers, baby. Big on as Kelly Lane packed it in at Ole Miss. Um, you misread that last part. I know I did on purpose. Oh, okay. So. Um, any anybody anything else stand out tonight? Uh, had obviously uh, Martinez at center, mm-hmm. um, and he looked good. By the way, Brian Kelly had a comment about that about getting uh, uh, Turner back out there. You know, he said he's, he he was beat up this week, but Marlon Martinez played well, so that should motivate him to come back early on Monday. So Malik yeah, neighbors with a big game. Uh, Brian Thomas, oh boy, uh, yeah. Besh had three receptions, and. Um, Man, By the way, Kayshawn Butte involved. was out. Malik Naver stepped up very well. So did Jack Besh with, with uh, Kayshawn Butte out. Kayshawn had the flu starting on Wednesday, and he's been fighting it all off. He went into pregame warm-ups, tried to see if he could go, and just couldn't shrug it off. So don't risk hurting yourself against UAB. That's good. You know, just like Josh Williams, take a rest. You're fighting the flu, and, you know, quite frankly, you don't want to spread that flu to more guys on the team. Apparently, that's going and, around. And like you said earlier, the defense for LSU, McBride kept a 34 yards rushing, only averaged 2.6. Yeah, that's huge. So, By the way, Hopkins, their quarterback, he started the game 8 for 8. He was slicing you up. He finishes 
14 of 29 and getting benched. So let's do some quick math. That sounds a lot like six of 21 to end the game. Um, you guys, if you've watched my show uh, in our post game shows for a while, I've been adamant for almost the entire season that Daniels would go pro. Um, I'm about to flip the script on that. I'm picking up some things tonight that uh, make things very interesting. Yeah. So, and it's not just the fact that he didn't come out and do the senior and get the uh, white panel football. Um, it's going to be a very interesting quarterback scenario in the coming weeks, guys. I saw Gordon so McKernan that. tweeting out his face a lot tonight with every touchdown. I wonder how much that deal is worth. And, you, you know, like I said, the one factor is he's not super high on anybody's draft board. I don't think I don't think he's going to be a first rounder this year, and you, you have to think if you're not a first we'll get, rounder, if you're a third rounder at best, you're making about seven hundred fifty k. Do you think that's in the realm of possibility for nil deals for him? No, no, I don't know that you would do that. Five hundred. Maybe I'm wrong. Like uh, I, I just don't know. Those are the kind of numbers I've uh, heard about um, some uh, other players in the SEC before NIL that would come back for their senior years at, a, at you know where. But now that's out in the open, we'll see. You talk about those pre NIL deals. Exactly. Yeah. Um, man, Jane Dance tonight, 22 of 29. 76%. I mean, he. he, he his stat sheet is just staggering. And Brian and I talked about it, and this is something we've been talking about all season long, Preston. Uh, you and I have talked about it in, in debating, uh, ranking the LSU quarterbacks this century. Who would you take over who? And it's, got, it's getting to the point now where, you know, Davey was always kind of in that number two realm for me. I know you had the 0-16 with Jamarcus. Yeah, um, I don't know. He might be better than Jamarcus. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I take Jaden Daniels is my number, my second best quarterback this century. By the way, I just want and to throw I, out there this team, and, I, and I've me, and, I, and, I, and I've always had Rohan Davy in that spot. This team's given me a lot of vibes of like that 06 team where a lot of the precursors for a championship are there. One of the big differences is you don't have a, a fifth-year senior quarterback behind the guy who would go pro. So think about that 06 team if Jamarcus would come back. You know, the problem is if Jamarcus leaves, you're, you're turned into a sophomore. Or, you know, yeah, either way, it's a sophomore. Um. Neighbors was spectacular. Yeah, he was. Trucking a Casper in the house. Go Tigers. Get it. Glad to have you with you, uh, uh, Trucking. Uh, Ahmad Rashad, Brian Kelly is coach of the year. We were talking about that earlier as well yeah. uh, with uh, Tennessee losing the way they did tonight, and that's always been as far as SEC coach of the year. Yeah. Um, you know, Brian gave a statistic to us that, you know, the AP will do their version and then the coaches will do theirs. And the coaches almost always give it to the champion, the coach of the championship team. You think he said 90% of the time. So that's fine. But let, let's see what the, the sports writers do. For, um, SEC the sports writers, coach, for, for SEC coach of the year, I don't think LSU has to even beat Georgia. I, I think he's done enough. And, and people know about the kind of team he inherited. I think he's done enough just making it to Atlanta and not getting upset by – Texas A&M. Absolutely. Now, national, 39, that's going to be tight because Sonny Dykes is doing really good job at TCU, and then you've got Lincoln Riley at USC. That one's going to be close. We'll see. If LSU upsets Georgia, I think he's Home Depot. Who walked in the, the door with 39 scholarship players? Only Brian Kelly. I mean, it, it, I've never seen a coach. Duct tape and play paper clips. And look, it's still duct taped and paper clipped. I mean, you realize when, when John Emery was sidelined tonight, when they, they said, get out of there, you had one running back tonight. One. I mean, get it done. <laughs> and they're it's still just, winning. He's a hell of a coach. 
uh, roughhouse. That Ole Miss game isn't even getting talked about much due to Tennessee falling apart. Um, Iowa State uh, says TCU Coach of the Year second Brian Kelly. Yeah, um, that, love me. Co- that's coach for Davis. National Coach of the Year. Um, look, um, you know, people talking yeah. Lincoln Riley, what he's done at USC. Oh yeah. Um, you got uh, people watching. Uh, I didn't even see what did UConn play today. What Jim Moore Jr. has done up there. Um, look, there's a lot of stories out there. The fact of the matter is, even to be to where you can really make a strong case for Brian Kelly with what he inherited. Is, is, is good enough. But I think he is SEC Coach of the Year. I'm sorry. Um, Von Bluesman uh, asked Tiger Bay, do you think Lane is losing focus due to the Auburn offering? Looks um, like it. I didn't watch the game, but looks like I don't it. know what's going on. I don't know what's going on there um, with Auburn and him. I mean, uh, we were hearing Dabo Sweeney talk in the press box tonight in Auburn. Uh, BK alluded to Noah Kane possibly coming back as well. He should. I know he really, he really likes what uh, Noah Kane can do. You're going to get Trey Holly and Caleb Jackson, a healthy Caleb Jackson back, and uh, they're they're going to get the, they're going to hit the transfer portal for another running back. I believe that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, how about, <laughs> how about Vandy? How about what about Vandy and the way that they stormed the field? A single foul line, and they were doing it orderly and at a slow pace. That's that. Wouldn't you expect that to be how Vandy would do it? I firmly that, believe that video was hilarious. Vandy is the only school who would do that firmly. But yeah, no, congratulate. I, I think Brian. By the way, Brian is a uh, Vanderbilt alumni. Uh, he was wearing his Vanderbilt class ring tonight. Uh, I think he said that was their first win over Florida since 1983. American Patriot on three has NIL valuation said it rates most players. You know, American Patriot, um, that is one feature that I don't know that I that I, I really like. Is that what you really want to be doing, putting dollar amounts on high school kids? There's something unseemly about it. I'm sorry. Well, and I also look at that and I'm like, what happens when a kid signs with a school? He's all happy until – maybe those NIL dollars don't come in and they're like, well, according to this website, I'm worth, you know, 120 K what's going on. I'm unhappy. Yeah. Look, I don't like it. Look, I'm, I'm all for NIL. I'm not, I'm not being the old, the old guy saying, get off my lawn and this newfangled NIL. No, not at all. But putting dollar figures in appraising kids that are uh, 16 years old. Yeah. And I, I, I just don't like it. Well, and what does that do for you as a fan? I'm, 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 willing, I'm willing to listen to someone tell me why I'm wrong. No. I'd like to hear it, but the way it looks to me, I don't like it. Well, I just don't understand as a fan what it actually provides, what insight it gives you, NIL value for a player. It just it doesn't click for me. Sonny Dykes coached your second Brian Kelly. Did I get that already? I thought I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he did it twice. C. Wilk, uh, BK needs to look for a replacement for Colby Richardson. Well, you know, hey, that's why you're hitting on Javi and Taviano and Desmond Ricks. That's why you're pushing for them hard. Really happy for, for Spencer Rattler. I felt like he got a raw deal at Oklahoma. He looked phenomenal tonight. He did, but he has struggled for most of the year. But he looked like Joe Burrow tonight. You know, was it 63 points? Man. How big is a win is that for South Carolina? You know, when South Carolina gets something like that, you're you're really happy for them because as a fan base, they really do support their school. But I, I was wondering tonight, when, when was the last win of that magnitude it, it, for South Carolina football? What would it be? Someone uh, said when they well, beat LSU, I, right? I, I, look, I, no, Alabama 2010. I mean, that was certainly bigger than this one. Yeah. Alabama um, was number one ever. Man, Steven Garcia went ham that night. That that would be the game. That's it. Uh, James Sells, uh, I just can't see the pro upside yet, especially when an Arkansas-type scheme is played against them. I will hold up uh, hold up until uh, Tama first, then Georgia. Talking about Jaden Daniels? Yeah. Um, you know, American here's the thing Patriot. About- 
I don't like it either. They have Arch Manning valued at $3 million. (laughs) No comment. Look, I don't want to bash Arch Manning. Uh, Every time we have talk about him, it sounds like we're bashing him just because of how highly he's projected. And it's not that kid's fault. Uh, You guys know it. If you watch my show, it's not. He is a a really good good kid. Yeah. But uh, that's some bad stuff to put on him. Yeah. And. I'm about to tell you, I think you high is going to lay the wood to Newman next week. Yeah. Not a bad kid at all. You know, I've, I've ran into him. A few I times think Keelan Moses, I, I think Keelan Moses is going to look like Harold Perkins. Uh, <laughs> hey, okay. he's a good player too. LSU's getting, getting on him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Back when Spurrier was coach says Von Bluesman. Um, no, 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 no. Head ball coach. That's, so, just, that's what he said. Spurrier. Oh yeah, is that what was I thinking? Oh man, I don't know. I just had bleh. Yeah, yeah. Big Honus Kelly. Some of that NIL stuff is skirting the line of pay for play. I like Louisiana laws on keeping it confidential. Yeah, I'm. I'm not nuts. Yeah, Need, none of us are going to be a fan of that here. Uh, See, Will, do y'all think LSU takes the number five spot Tuesday night? Um, they could. Uh, there's some conjecture out there where people think maybe USC might jump on this week, which if they do, that's fine. Fellas, she beats a and m and does something against Georgia, then you then everything changes. I I do think LSU will be number five, and no, I don't think it doesn't matter because if LSU beats Georgia, there's not a win left on USC schedule that would be more impressive than Georgia. LSU will just re-jump them if they beat Georgia. Well, there's nothing on USC. There's nothing on USC schedule that's as, as good as some of LSU's wins. No, no, and that's to say, I think LSU will be number five. And if they aren't, it doesn't matter anyways. Uh, all you have to do, is, guys, just win. Just beat Georgia, and you're in. But Tuesday night, I'll be reacting to the playoff rankings. I think they come out at seven thirty or eight. Uh, my show will be on at eight, so I'll be reacting to that playoff ranking last week i had to wait <laughs> my show went extra long waiting on them to make that yeah radio. because uh they they that you know triple double overtime, overtime basketball, basketball team Ugh. we november had basketball uh, is rude I've, I've i've gone out and said this many times i hate november basketball it should be illegal to play basketball till christmas the previous um weeks it would it would the the rankings were coming out right when we were doing player interviews at the football facility and um, but I think and I think that's the way it's going to be this coming week, right? It's going to be back where it's supposed to be. Wow. Not sandwiched between basketball games. We'll see. I don't uh, know. None of that really matters. You got to win football games now. But just right. know you went out. You're 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 going to be able to beat your chest. But uh, Georgia is the. <laughs> That's not going to be that. That would not be. That's not going to be easy. Um, Von Bluesman, Georgia has proved with the Missouri and Kentucky game they are beatable with the right game plan. And Jaden Daniels, when he's on and doing what he's doing and having a a, a box score the way he had tonight, which mimics most of the weeks uh, in the last two months. And Matt House is dialed in early. We'll see. Hey, Mike, did you cover recruiting in 94 or 95? I have a question about an old high school running back. I did. I did cover it back then. Uh, who is it? I might remember. It's probably the kid who got uh, – who was the kid who got kicked off the team who was so good, beat Auburn? Um, I'm talking about Cecil Collins. Yeah, Cecil Collins. I bet you it's about Cecil Collins. Watch. Well, back then it would be uh, Rondell Mealy, Falk, and uh, Cecil. And then before that you'd be talking Tumor, money- Main Sharp. Look, my money is Um, this question is about Cecil. Cecil the Diesel, baby. Best running back I ever saw over a three-game period at LSU, period. Cecil Collins. Ooh, I don't know, man. Fournette, 2015? Absolutely. Remember what he did to Auburn? Absolutely over a three-game period. I think I think you just have amnesia. It's something about that, like, 2014 to 2016. You were in streak. diapers. You were in diapers in the period I'm talking about. Well, I mean, yeah, but come I'm, on, man. So you, you haven't even seen the video. Go go pull it up. Okay, I've watched Cecil the Diesel highlights, man. Dude was a beast. He was well, absolutely. Fournette was a monster, too, though. 
Then Kevin Falk was pretty good too. Now, um, talking with Casper, I didn't watch the game today. Who was the offensive and defensive players of the game? Well, offense obviously that's Jaden Daniels, no doubt. And def- and defensive, hmm. All right, so Greg Penn had three tackles, but only one. I'm sorry, eight tackles, but but one for a loss. Okay, and then Harold Perkins had two tackles for a loss, a very, very nice tackle uh, on, on one of them. And he only he had five tackles. He was the second leading tackler. There was a bunch of DBs who, who had chances to make interceptions. There was a lot of balls over there. No one made it. I'm going Harold Perkins because he, he made two tackles for a loss. Yeah, Fouché, Fouché had a nice game. Um, you said Perkins? Yeah, I'm going to go Perkins. I mean, nobody really stood out on defense that well. But, I'm gonna go with Penn. Yeah, Penn with eight tackles, eight. but you know, Perkins five solo and, and and yeah. Yeah, the defensive stats are just spread around the table, man. Mike Godfrey lost his mind uh, calling. Man, I thought Godfrey was good back in the day. Um. Georgia will target number 22 all day. James Clement, Notre Dame High of Crowley. Talent, uh, man, I don't remember him. I don't remember him. Did you just say Clement? James Clement. Claymore. James Clement. Claymore. You kicked out of the state, man. Tu ne peux parler français? Come on, bro. Not from, not from Crowley. From Crowley, it could be Clement. Boy, I tell you what, Notre Dame or Crowley. They if it got was the Delcom, freaking mosquitoes in the entire state. If he was from Del, if he was from Delcom or Erath, we'd say Clement. Clement or Bro Bridge. Um, I wonder if he was related to Chase Clement. Came a couple years after. All right, guys. Um, Hit that like button if you're enjoying the show. And uh, let's see, any, any guys, any more questions? Or we're going to wrap up. Uh, throw, throw us something out there. Yeah, American Patriot agrees with me. I'm going pin on defense. Uh, neighbors runner up on offense. Yes, that's that's. I agree with you. Hey, on you know who else should deserves a shout out on offense? That was Noah Kane. He had three touchdowns tonight. If he's your fantasy back, you're probably winning your league, your your your, your uh, game this weekend. Thirteen carries, seventy six yards, three tutties. Absolutely. All right, guys. It's uh, 10 to 2 a.m. Uh, you guys go t- subscribe to Tiger Bait if you're not already with us. Try us out for $1. I think you're going to enjoy the website. And uh, we've got a lot more. Uh, we've got Brian's instant analysis up on the website. Try that. Uh, you want to read that for a dollar. Uh, I've got the commitment story up. And um, Jane Daniels interview. Uh, Preston's game story and Brian Kelly's full press conference. Uh, I think uh, Jay Dams, we got a lot of uh, interview footage with him. All that's on the front page of Tiger Bait. Hit the like button, share, and of course, subscribe, notification bell. We're going to put some more stuff on Tiger Bait tomorrow and uh, reached out to some of the recruits uh, that were there. Uh, a lot of it was a small group. Uh, I saw a lot of them in the back of the end zone. It was a small group. Um, the weather did a, did a number on that, but still uh, one official visit, and we're going to reach out to some of those. So, all right, guys, y'all have a good rest of the weekend. Stay warm, and uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, spread the word on Tiger Bait. Night, y'all. All right, See guys. y'all Tuesday night. Good night. <laughs>